This right here is over 4,000 lines of code to generate a 3D spinning ASCII donut in SVG. Yes, that's right, I made donut.c in an image format. It all started with a pull request on the donut project by Joe Skeen titled simply SVG. The donut he made looked something like this, and the code was fairly simple, clean, and donut shaped. I was a bit reluctant to accept the submission at first, as it wasn't animated or even close to the output of Donut.c, but Joe quickly discovered that SVGs could be animated, and created this beautiful animation you see here. This donut was great and I merged it, but quickly realized that if this animation in SVG without JavaScript was possible, making an ASCII donut in SVG was completely feasible as well. So I set two simple rules for myself. I couldn't use JavaScript, and it had to be renderable in nearly all SVG viewers. The question now is how. First, let's look at how an animation in SVG is done. There are various ways, but for our purpose, we will be using CSS. Having worked with web development for a good amount of time, this should be a piece of cake. First, let's get a simple SVG like this with the words hello world in the center. I'll be using a similar style template for our donut later with a black background and white monospace text. Now we just use the CSS class we already have on our text and slap on some animations with keyframes and CSS as you do in HTML. These keyframes are pretty simple. They have a time interval they are active for and you can assign what happens at certain percentages in that time interval. For example, I can tell it to have black text for the first 50% of 30 seconds and white text for the next 50%, effectively making it flash. Then we tell it to loop infinitely and just like that, we have a simple CSS blinking effect. The next challenge was how we were going to port an ASCII animation to SVG. JS was off bound, so we have no way to generate the frames of the donut. The only solution left was to include all of the frames in SVG and use CSS to show them one at a time, almost like a stop motion to some degree. I'll get into the logistics of displaying an actual donut in just a bit, but let us make a quick proof of concept. For example, if we wanted an SVG that showed high and by successively, we first make two texts. Then we use a similar blinking animation on each, but stagger the timing so that in the first 50% high shows and in the next 50% by shows. Great, now we have the frame by frame animation part, let's worry about actually rendering each frame of the donut. As you may notice, rendering a donut shape is much more sophisticated than a simple hi or by, as apparently the text element doesn't play well with line breaks. After a bit of fiddling around, I was able to find the t-span element that creates an artificial line break. However, the spaces in the middle of our donut are now gone in the t-span. We have to replace each space with this following escape sequence because SVG is just like that. The one thing that is really important is the fact that we need to keep the spaces or line breaks that are around the actual donut so that the text element is consistent in size and won't move around as the frames change. Otherwise, the text will try to center itself even though the frame of the donut isn't always supposed to be in the smack center of the screen. Now we just have to put everything together, except there's a minor problem. In the original code for each frame, the rotations are incremented by about 0.05 or pi over 60 radians per frame. In order to get a full rotation, we need 2 pi radians, or 120 frames per cycle. And there is absolutely no way I am going to manually put 120 frames worth of ASCII donut text into an SVG and then take the time to write the CSS for it. That's too much donut even for me. Good thing I am a programmer and I can be lazy, I mean efficient. Let's take our original JS code and modify it a bit for our needs. First, I made both axes of rotation consistently increment by pi over 60 radians per frame. Next, instead of just rendering the donut, I'm having the code put all of the generated SVG text and t-span elements with the spaces escaped into a file. For each text group, I include a general donut class to format all the frames, as well as a specific numerical class per text element to later show and hide each frame individually. Now, just run that generation code 120 times, and you get this following SVG. Finally, we had to deal with the styling. I had to generate this one with some JS written from scratch as, again, writing 120 slightly different SVG classes and keyframes with a high chance of typoing and ruining everything was not on my schedule. I started by making a general style class for donuts, which is basically the same as the original class we had on the hello world animation. 
Then for the 120 frames, I assigned each of the unique numerical classes I gave before a keyframe group. Each keyframe group lasts 6 seconds, the full length of one cycle of the animation. Now we needed to assign the actual keyframes. For the first keyframe in each group, we start with the text black until the frame should be shown. Then at the correct percentage per cycle, make the text white so we can actually see it. Finally, make the text black again to hide it. With all that done, it was time to put it all together. I copied and pasted the styles and elements into the SVG file. In theory, everything should work. Or not. This isn't ideal. And to be fair, I had a bit of a panic attack. I felt like I had a decent idea of what was happening, and I didn't like it. My theory was that the SVG renderer was simply too slow to catch up with the continuous re-renders. I quickly modified the code a little to slow the animation down. Still no help. I was at a loss. I didn't make it this far, spending time writing code to generate code just for the SVG renderer to tap out. I searched the problem up to no avail. I thought my project was done for. Until I realized something. If you look really closely at the rendered donut, it almost seems as if some text is overlapping the other text. Almost as if the text wasn't truly disappearing. And then I remembered. I was setting the font color to black to make the text quote unquote disappear. In reality, the text elements were simply stacking on top of each other and not rendering properly. If I varied the opacity instead, this could all work. I quickly went back and changed two lines of code, regenerated the styling, and put everything together one last time. This project has to be one of the most interesting things I have ever done. There were a few moments that I scratched my head for a good while too. Anyway, I am glad it is all done in the end. Or is it? Because there is still one major thing to do in order to call this a successful Donut.C clone, and that is to make this monstrosity donut shaped. I wasn't too sure how to do this, but Rue on GitHub has volunteered to make an automatic donut formatter for code, and I will definitely be posting more about this project in the future. Additionally, if you want to join my quest to make donut.c in every language, please contribute to the donut project with the link on the screen right now or the link in the description below. I'm counting on you. Huge thanks as always to Andy S for the original Donut.C. Additionally, this project would never have existed without the amazing Joe scheme. Another huge thank you to everyone who has contributed to the Donut project so far, and a special shout out to Rue for all her amazing work. Also, please trust me, there will be more non-Donut things in this channel's future. It's just been a few Donut-y months, if you know what I mean.